It was adventurous, up and down and up and down. And it really was like you were a pirate going up and down the waves. Thanks, River. Couldn't have said it better myself. Stay tuned for Gravel World's 2021 coverage here on Gravel Guru. Neil, you're back from Lincoln, Nebraska, back in the studio here with episode seven this season here on Gravel Guru. How you doing? I'm doing good, Matt. And not only am I back in the studio, but Matt, you're a dad. I, I am now a dad. Uh, I was not at Gravel Worlds. We'll get to that here in a little <laughs> bit because my wife and I were expecting our first child that week. And uh, later, later on in the week after Gravel Worlds, she arrived, Kennedy Rose. So here's a picture of her. So she's loved dearly. Lots of attention. You've seen her on the Gravel Guru Instagram stories, I'm <laughs> sure, this week. So that's why the show in this episode's a little slow coming out. Yeah, it, it, you know, everything kind of has kind of hit at the same time. It's been a little bit busy, but I will say this summer has flown by. It has been a blast. We haven't been in the studio in part because it's been such a busy summer with a lot of things going on. You've traveled a little bit. I've traveled a little bit. Yeah. Then, like you just mentioned, you had a baby. <laughs> yeah. So we, we've been doing a whole lot, but haven't been sitting here in the, in the studio to talk about it. Correct. We got out and we rode together earlier this week, too. Yep. We got just a 15-mile ride, which I probably desperately needed out of the house for an hour. Uh, I, I understand. Having been a new uh, a father of newborns twice before, those breaks, um, getting out of the house, are, are desperately needed sometimes. Yeah, it felt fantastic uh, to get out. And the bigger thing, probably why I haven't been out in two and a half weeks on the bike, is I had some bike trouble. Yeah, so what, you and me rode right before Gravel World. Yeah, the okay, Saturday so morning... The week prior to Gravel World. Yeah, we're like, you know, let's get out. Let's do just about 20, 25 miles. Mm -hmm. Our intention in all of our rides at that time was to stay relatively close to town in case I got a phone call. Come. Yeah, in yeah. case you got the phone call saying, hey, baby's here. You need to get here right away. So we were just going on a short, what, 20, 25 mile route. That we do all our, the time. That we, yes, that we do all the time. We're on our way rolling. We kind of hit a little bit of a chunky gravel section, and all of a sudden, you're way back behind me. I'm like, what's going on? And you're like, I'm flatted. Okay, well, we can handle that, right? Except, In fact, I couldn't. <laughs> except we couldn't, yes. <laughs> uh, so, uh, yeah, so you looked down on my bike there and thought it was, you know, I had a broken spoke. Okay, not unheard of. I mean, yeah. this bike doesn't have an incredible amount of miles on it. It was my it was my loft anywhere. Yeah, a, a good uh, buddy of our of ours, uh, Josh Sprague, finished the Unbound 100 this past year. I think with two broken spokes. Yeah. So, so anyway, we spoke, were like no five deal. miles from home. I was going to turn around, air up the tire, and go. Yeah. It didn't want to air up. It, it, it was a bad ordeal. I ended up. I think Isaac told me I had three broken spokes um, <laughs> on my wheels there. Anyways, Isaac and Aaron down at Gravel City Adventure Supply got it fixed up. Uh, luckily, then that next week, I really didn't need the bike much. You know, I was a little preoccupied. A little busy with other things. So, so they got me hooked up, though. They got it fixed. And speaking of Isaac, Isaac was with you. Yeah, so Isaac and me both uh, kind of representing Gravel Guru. We went up to Lincoln, Nebraska for Gravel Worlds. Kind of. You guys flew the Gravel Guru flag at Gravel Worlds. Okay, yes. We were flying that Gravel Guru flag at Gravel Worlds, and we had an absolute blast up there. I mean, we both got there. Friday morning. He got there a little bit earlier than I did. I had to take kids to school and do all that dad stuff kind of early in the morning. So after I did that, I hopped in the car and headed up there and met him at the expo. And we had fun at the expo and we got to talk to some of our, our good buddies uh, that we've visited with at other events in the past. Yeah. Um, and just had a blast. And then I got to ride my bike on Saturday and he did tons of work out there in the field filming yeah. the race so isaac's definitely not new to bikes by any means like i said working down at gravel city yeah he's been to gravel guru events with us numerous times before uh, long story short isaac actually grew up in high school working on some of my video projects that i teach for out at the district and help supervise so me and isaac know each other well we know what each other expects on events and uh I am overly grateful that Isaac could go for me because there was no way I was going to be four hours away that weekend. So he really helped push it along, and I'm, I'm, I'm truly grateful that he was there and able to go. And that's why we have highlights and video of the weekend. Absolutely. He, he did a fantastic job up there again. I mean, he stayed 
focused. He stayed on point. What I got to see, and and I already got to see the highlight video, and I thought it was fantastic. So he did did a great yeah. job considering he's a, a young buck compared to you yeah. and me. Well, you mentioned the highlights. <laughs> let's just take a look. Ninety seconds of highlights from Gravel Worlds 2021, just to kind of set the mood, and let's let's get rolling with it. Absolutely great job with those highlights, Isaac. Uh, you knocked it out of the park. I first saw a demo late, late Sunday night. Once you guys got back Saturday night, I know he had about a 24-hour turnaround on getting some things done, but did a fantastic job on him. Yeah, no, he did an absolute wonderful job. Um, really knocked it out of the park the entire time that we were up there in Nebraska. Um, he was focused. I mean, I could tell that the whole time. He was focused on what he was doing. Um, and again, for being a young buck compared to you and I, I um, thought he did a fantastic job up there. I mean, I'm not overly old, but I was about Isaac's age when I started this show. <laughs> and uh, it does take a fair amount of energy. But anyways, fantastic job, Isaac. You talked about getting up there Friday. Yeah. When you got up there, kind of took in the expo and got to talk to some people. Yeah, we got to get up to the expo. Both of us are on Friday um, about noon. And we got to hang out in one of the first person... Uh, people that we got to speak to was uh, Jason, one of the promoters there with Gravel Worlds. Um, Jason's been doing a great job uh, with everything going on up there with the event, and so we got a chance to talk to him about um, some of the new things that are going on at this year's event, along with the expo and some of the things that were surrounding that moment, at least yeah. in time for us. Yeah, it looked like quite the setup. Let's hear from uh, Jason, one of the promoters. This year, in 2021, we did move almost all of our activities up here to the Fallbrook neighborhood in North Lincoln. This is where the race has started since about 2017, I believe. Uh, so we're about a mile from gravel. We're really close that we can uh, be really close to gravel. Uh, but we also have a lot more space that we can spread out. So this year we added a stage uh, sponsored by Specialized uh, where we can have some panels. We, we just got done with an amazing women's panel. There's actually a, an afternoon panel with uh, 10 amazing athletes up there right now. Uh, so we're really thankful for that. We also have our expo that's going on back here uh, where we have more participants there uh, than ever. So we're really thankful for those sponsors who come. And then we also, uh, on Thursday, we had a, our first demo day. So we had five different si uh, bicycle companies that came out and you were able to go out and try uh, their, their newest models, uh, which uh, right now, if you've been to a bike shop, you know there's not many bikes you can go try out. So it was a great opportunity for people to actually get their hands on bikes. Uh, and we're really thankful that uh, all those sponsors came out and had, a, had demo fleets that they could try. One thing that's really grown this year is participation of women. Uh, we're, we're really excited about that. We've boosted uh, our percentage from about 20% to almost 30%. And also exciting, really exciting statistic is the highest percentage event that we have is the long voyage. So we have more women by percentage doing the long voyage. So uh, really excited about that growth. 
just in general, also just the culture around cycling. We've seen uh, gravel cycling. We've seen such a huge growth in the community of gravel, uh, which is is what it's really all about for us. We started the hashtag Gravel Family three years ago, uh, and there I think there was three posts when we had started that trend. Now it it that's what everybody calls this, and that's that's such a huge thing to us. That's what it's all about. You know, the the banners and the sponsors, all those things are great, but at the end of the day, the the Gravel Family is what this is truly about. And and we're, uh, we're really thankful that we can just be a part of that, that we can be a voice that people trust uh, to kind of guard that gravel family uh, uh, experience and the, the true feeling of grassroots gravel as it, as it started. So it, it is something that's huge for us here at Gravel Worlds um, to, to really make sure that the essence of gravel and that self-supported um, event where you go out and you're, you're just with a bunch of friends and you're just uh, coming back to have some beers at the end is, is really what it's, it started out as and that's something that's still important to us to keep that spirit alive. Always great hearing from Jason up there. Always great hearing from that entire team up there. Absolutely love Absolutely, all the promoters yeah. on the Gravel Worlds team. But Jason talked about a couple things. One, the Fallbrook neighborhood and the participation this year. Yeah, so the, the Fallbrook neighborhood, I love it. I love just that atmosphere around Schilling Bridge. Uh, the expo was, was nice. Um, you know, things were kind of spaced out a little bit more there, but you had the opportunity to really travel around, talk to different groups, uh, different companies that are there that are represented. They had food available actually outside from Schilling Bridge that was nice. there, uh, pre-made kind of, you know, you can get this or you can get this. It was a nacho thing or it was a sandwich. And uh, that was just so easy for food, nice. especially at that point because you didn't have to head inside. I know in years past when I've gone, you know, heading into Schilling Bridge to get meals, sometimes you're having to wait, you know, just in line to get a spot to sit down at. And so to be able to get up there to arrive, to get food right away, man, that was fantastic. And then it was a great place, too, to get to watch um, the, the long voyage folks take off. You know, I mean, it, it felt to me very similar to when the first XL took off here. Okay. Because it wasn't super busy around the expo. There was, you know, people coming, people going, but nobody was staying, it seemed like for a very long extended period of time it wasn't just you know thousands upon thousands of people piled in the expo but then all of a sudden as 4 30 4 45 hits could, um, could you kind of feel that tension all, start to build all, out all there? of a sudden more and more bodies are coming the, the volume level is just getting higher in the background not only that it, it's a little bit chaotic uh, a friend of ours Vinny. Uh, mm -hmm. from from Cantu, she's got some issues going on she can't get air into her front tire um and this is probably 25 minutes before takeoff mm -hmm. uh, of the long voyage and so she finds isaac isaac starts trying to take care of it he goes over to the shimano tent um i'm trying to help adhere her number on a little bit better because she was trying to use a double-sided sticky tape that wasn't really holding it in place and so the chaos the noise everything's kind of building up and then all of a sudden you you look at about 450 455 and i'm looking around and there's just people shoulder to shoulder everywhere it is huh. packed it is packed down the the area where they're leaving i mean for for quite a, a long stretch i mean people were there and it was like where did everyone mm -hmm. come from it had that same kind of feel when the xl took off here in emporia yeah absolutely i remember talking to you on the phone that afternoon that you'd been up there earlier in the afternoon and things were chill and very yeah. casual and then i think i was on the phone when you got back to do that interview and uh closer to four or five o'clock when the long voyage started and you're like oh man it's filling up quick down here it, 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 it was it just came out of nowhere and it kind of surprised me because you know there is a lot of things to do in lincoln a lot of places to go to eat a lot of things to you know just get away and so folks were no doubt doing that but when 445 450 hit i was just stunned by the amount of people there it was awesome to see that for the takeoff of the long voyage um, it, it, it was a good time, you know, and the, the crazy thing about the long voyage, huh. the, well, the crazy thing about the long voyage, <laughs> one of the crazy things about the long voyage is the fact that about the time that we were finishing that interview with Jason that you saw earlier, it just had started to rain, uh, towards the end of us interviewing him. And as they're taking off, the skies are just darkening south of, of Lincoln. And of course that, that became kind of a story piece, uh, for what happened during the long voyage. I remember texting you that evening a screenshot, I think, of the radar, and I'm like, oh, no, this isn't good. Yeah, you know, and I talked to a couple of my friends, and they're like, you know, we didn't really get rained on so much in, in writing, 
but it's what it did to all the minimum maintenance roads that yes. really caused the problem. You because, know? Uh, and maybe my head wasn't in the game that weekend or whatnot. I, usually I study the map so thoroughly. Even if I'm not racing, if I'm just covering an event, yeah, I want to know that map in and out. I want to know every paved road crossing to get out there for coverage. But there was a lot of the long voyage route south of Lincoln. Oh, it, it, it pretty much was almost all exclusively south of Lincoln. And it's areas that really we haven't ridden into much before. A lot yeah. of times they go north, they go up towards I think El some Frazo of the early area. Years maybe they were down that way. Yeah, maybe or, you know, early. I think even some of their, you know, I've, I've been there only two years before. I've been in there in 2017, mm-hmm. 2018. And I know that we've kind of looped down a little bit yes. south, but we've always kind of come back up north. It's never been a long extended um a trip down south but this time they were they were heading south and they were heading south for a pretty good distance um and most of it i think they started out heading east of town and then after going east started working their way south and that's where all of the rain was coming through and yeah um, it, it just it, absolutely clobbered that course I, i'm actually over here on my laptop looking at the track leaders page because that was one feature they have that's yeah. nice about these long distance ones is people can pull it up and pay attention to them online. You probably find yourself throughout the evening pulling them up, checking, hey, where's your friend at? Where's this at? And I, and actually, basically, until like mile 220 out of 300 was all south of I-80 at Lincoln. Yeah. So that all got wet that day, yeah, for sure. All, all got wet. And But like you mentioned, pulling up the track leaders, that was something that was going on nonstop downtown afterwards. Everybody's yeah. checking to see where their friends are at, mm-hmm. see where people are moving. And we had friends here from Emporia, had friends from other uh, you know states that were there as well, mm-hmm. taking part of that. So it can't help it. I'm dot watching nonstop. Yeah, dot watching is a lot of fun. Neil, I can't help but ask, what is your best 300 mile, mile time? Over the course of a month? <laughs> <laughs> right? That, that's a lot of times what we shoot for in a month. Um, Anyways, we have the overall 300 mile champion here. Interview from Zeno. It was like insane. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Hell of a ride, dude. Hell of a ride. Thank Congrats. You, thank you. It was incredible. Like last night, we got so lucky with the thunderstorms. Like, I thought, I mean, it was scary for like a couple hours. There was like lightning all around us, but it missed us. But then we got to the peanut butter stuff. Like, I guess it rained like south of us. And that was, uh, oh man. <laughs> that was probably the hardest part. Pushing your bike through, going on the grass. And the guy who ended up second, he was like really good. He dropped me on the, on a, on the mud. And then I caught him briefly at a gas station, but I was like a zombie. The second gas station, I was like, literally just walking like, I was about to fall over because I I bonked and I didn't have any water. And then uh, I kind of didn't see him for until like 30 miles to go. And I I was like, I was like, I'm gonna get second. It's it's awesome, you know? Like I I, I couldn't believe I'm gonna get second at Gravel Worlds. And then I see him like, I'm, I'm like timing him and I'm like gaining on him, I'm like, there's no way, like, never give up, you know, never give up. And I got him, I put on a charge, and uh, that was it. So That was 20 hours, 48 minutes, and 15 seconds to knock out 300 miles. Yeah. You think you could do it? No, not a chance. I, I don't think I could come close to that either. I, I, it, Actually, that's pretty close probably to my elapsed time for doing the 150 virtual last year. <laughs> yeah, probably pretty close. You know, I, I, I just, it blows my mind how these guys can not only do 300 miles, but how these riders get out there and they do 300 miles straight in that pace through the conditions, the muddy roads, the walking the bike, the carrying the bike. I mean, he talked about walking his bike through the grass at points because, again, how bad it was out there. Got to see his bike afterwards. I mean, just completely filthy, mud everywhere. And a lot of the folks that did the long voyage, if you saw pictures of their bikes afterwards, were just caked. Um, And I I just can't fathom how to 300 miles, 20 hours, what, 48 minutes you said? something. I mean, that just is absolutely mind-blowing in those conditions. Yeah. Mind blowing. I, I, again, haven't really broke down the maps. I know there were some gas stations on routes. I think there was eleven total towns that they went through. There was gas stations, um, based on what one of my buddies told me. The first stretch was the longest stretch. It was like fifty-six miles to so the first gas station. But then after that, there were every 
you know, 25 to 35 okay. miles. So that's, that's pretty good spacing. Out, yeah. Assuming yeah. things were open all night and whatnot out there. So yeah. that's still a long day on up, down, up, down, up, down. <laughs> so anyways, congratulations to everybody that was out there doing the long voyage in the inaugural year. Yeah. I think these long events are something we're going to see more and more of probably in gravel. Not something I'm overly eagerly to jump yeah. into. Absolutely. I mean, there are people that seriously seem to want this, that the 100, the 150, the 200 isn't enough for them. They are looking for a little bit more distance. And if that's what you want, have at it. Mm-hmm. I'm okay. I mean, this year this year was the first year I didn't do the 150. Mm-hmm. You know, we're about to talk about the 150. This is the first year I went up yeah. there that I said, you know what? I don't want to ride my bike 150 miles this year. I want to ride 75 instead. Um, but there are definitely people that want to take it further yeah. and further and further. And uh, I'm, abso- them. <laughs> I'm, abso- I'm absolutely not saying I won't ever do something like that, but just not anytime soon. Correct. So anyways, congratulations once again to everybody that took part in that. Moving on to 150, this is the classic, this is Gravel Worlds as we know it. Yes. The main stage, 150 miles of sandy, corn-lined rows. I'll be honest with you, going out there and doing the 75, I was starting to scratch my head and wonder how in 2017 and 2018 I did the 150 on a single speed. Correct. (laughs) Because I was just climbing those hills and then descending and then climbing and descending, and it just was nonstop. There really isn't a break. Um, there is never a point where you really hit one of those long extended flat stretches, maybe a mile here, maybe a mile there, but never too much. And it's just mind blowing how fast these leaders come through, um, of these, you know, 150 mile events. Uh, the men's actually, the, the, the men's winner, um, actually made it. Now they started an hour before us, but they also went 75 miles further, actually came in before <laughs> I, I finished the, the 75. I mean, that's just how fast over 400 finishers in the 150 this year, which is fantastic. What was the weather like that day? That's something I forgot to ask about. Yeah, you know, it, it wasn't honestly that bad. There was a little bit of a breeze out of the North. Okay. Um, probably about 10, maybe miles an hour. Nothing mm-hmm. because, crazy. I, I asked um, about weather because there's not much shade cover on the world's course. But, but I was going to say, but you're just still exposed. And, and so the sun was out. Um, I'm actually still peeling a little bit on my yeah. legs because I forgot sunscreen yeah. for the first 45 miles. That, and then that's got a rookie some, move. Dude, it, it, it was a busy morning move yeah. is what it was. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so at mile 45, I got some from my friend Mindy and put some on. But, but definitely had a little bit of a burn right at my uh, short line. Uh, that I'm still, again, it started to peel a little bit. But it, it, it was sunny. Mm-hmm. It did produce some warmth. But it was never that warmth that you were just feeling like, oh, it's so hot, it's miserably, like, I can't, I don't want to be out here type mm-hmm. warmth. Um, and, again, that breeze was fantastic. That north breeze was great. Um, it kept us cool early on in the event. Um, it helped kind of blow us home a little bit later on in the event. And, Anytime we were crossing, it was just, again, it would provide just enough cool that the sun yeah. and the heat really wasn't bad. It, Whereas in previous years, I've been there when it's been up, you know, in the 90s and mm-hmm. miserable out there. And it, it was not that this year. Looking at the numbers, it looks like a great day for racing. Uh, oh, yeah. our, our men's and women's champions literally finished within 21 minutes of each other, if that tells you the type of day that was out there. I, I pretty much came in, like, dead center between the men's and women's champion. I mean, between John and Lauren, I, I, I kind of came in right between them. As, finished- as a clarifier, you did the 75, and you came in between them. Not, not, like, not, not like you, you were on John's yeah. tail on the one. It, it, it was more like 79 that I okay. did, first okay. of all. Okay, excuse but, uh, me. <laughs> yeah, no, it's definitely not like I was on their tail yet. No, I. And they, but they got an hour head start again. Don't forget about that. But I ah, mean, the great and, and again, we'll talk about my day a little bit later. But um, it it was, it was kind of just odd, crazy timing. I mean, we did we finished right between the two of them, me and Mindy. And um, by the time we had got there, Isaac had just finished his interview with John. We wrapped up, and we again weren't there more than probably about five ten minutes. And Lauren comes rolling through, and. Um, so it was good. It was cool to get to see that. Um, um, it was kind of a good time for us ultimately to finish. And um, kudos to those guys and gals that get out there that crush that 150 course. Because again, having done some of those in the, in years past, that it is it's it's not easy. Yeah, over a 21 mile an hour average pace on the front pack there. So, anyways, let's hear from John and Lauren, the first and first place overall and first place female category winners. The rollout was pretty chill. Uh, 
it was a lot more relaxed than it was in the past. Like Chase, um, you know, I think people are sort of, you know, the, the stronger gravel riders are sort of getting wiser to, um, you know, how like the long game strategy of gravel racing so people are a little more relaxed at the beginning it seems like this year compared to 19. Um, Chase Wark got off the front real early snuck away and uh, I mean he had an incredible ride coming in third so um, but the the group didn't really work very well together it was sort of you know rodeo labs would send a guy up the road we would send a guy up the road and um, it you know it's just sort of mishmash attack here maybe someone maybe we'd get a pace line going for a couple miles there um, until colin attacked at mile 78 and that was when the the, the winning breakaway got away the weather was that's the, I, I couldn't imagine a better day uh better conditions weather wise for nebraska in the summer um like i was over hydrated i had to I had to be the whole race basically because you know, like I just usually it's a struggle to stay hydrated but this year that just wasn't as much of an issue it wasn't super humid and I don't think it ever got above 80 degrees out there so so we were lucky staying on topped up on my electrolytes I had some calories in my bottles early on and then just switched to like a low calorie electrolyte mix later on um, and just trying to eat you know I've got like I just try to eat a different thing I actually used a lot of the like the liquid gels this year like the higher like the, the larger volume ones um, you know and I actually didn't take a camel back this year because uh, I knew it was it was a little shorter between the the first and second checkpoint this year only about um, 54 miles instead of last time it was more like 68 or so so I, I barely made it to that second checkpoint like I kind of had to nurse my last bottle there a little bit but I only drank one one big bottle really between the start and the first checkpoint so um, that that definitely sort of like you know I had to adjust on the fly as far as hydration and nutrition went I mean the the, the team the Abus Pro gravel squad was amazing like those guys um, we rode really well as a team for the first you know 50 miles I got a bomb, this is, man. yeah Bob Bob Cummings the team manager this guy's the the, the brains in the brawn behind the operation um, so I can't thank them enough um, and uh, and the, just the Gravel World's crew, it's so it's such a good vibe out here. Like it's it just feels like home to me. Like I love being here. Um, like Corey and Jason and and Schmitty, you know Craig Schmidt's out there at all the major highway crossings. Like you know giving us the signal and stuff. So um, you know it just it just feels just so like natural and organic and. Um, it's just such a great gravel experience, so I recommend it to anyone. <laughs> that was a long, that was a long day in the saddle. That was my second most longest ride ever after Unbounds. Uh, my third most longest ride ever was SBT Gravel. So uh, yeah, I was didn't know what would happen at mile 150 if like something would happen, but it was good. It was good. I felt really strong. Uh, it's nice being back at sea level or close to sea level uh, compared to SBT. That was nice. Uh, but yeah, it was a good day out in the saddle. It was really fun with all, I don't know, just out for a bike ride today. <laughs> I actually didn't have any mechanicals today, surprisingly. Well, the gravel was pretty tame. I mean, it was like a little bit loose in some sections, but it was, it wasn't as gnar as maybe like Unbounds where I got a couple flats, or I got two flats. And, you know, the, gra the gravel was pretty mellow. It was a little loose in sections, but no mechanicals today. I had a mechanical yesterday, my shifter died. So I was really happy that didn't happen today because I definitely needed some gears. I am just sticking to the unbound formula. Uh, I'm trying to eat more than I think I need to because it's always been one of my biggest weaknesses has not been eating enough and drinking enough. So if there's ever like a moment of like, just a chill, uh, a chill moment, I just drink and eat as much as I can and it seems to be working. <laughs> it, today was a good day. I uh, did my plan and rode really, really hard. And it was hard. But good thing I trained so much. <laughs> All right, thanks guys. Always great, Neil, hearing from the champions. I want to make sure and give a huge shout out 
it's not every event or every athlete that's always willing to take a mic right in the face right after they get done with a feat like that. So Yeah, I know, absolutely. I mean, kudos to both of uh, both of them, both John and Lauren, for talking to us. Again, I, I miss John's. That was He was there about 10 minutes or so probably before I got in was there for Lauren, and, and she was nothing but kind. And she's recovering from 150 <laughs> miles at a 20-plus mile an hour pace yeah. um, to stop and to talk with us. That was, that was again, very kind and good. Um, I couldn't imagine. I was struggling talking <laughs> myself that day yeah. afterwards because I was just a little bit wore out. And mm-hmm. so, um, again, thanks to them for sure. Yeah, always great hearing from them. But now, Neil, we get to hear <laughs> from you about your day. What was your day like? Let, let's start at the beginning of your day, though. I think that's worth. Yeah. So, I mean, and this is part of the Gravel family. So, yeah, beginning of my day, um, I, I wake up. I have my alarm set for 445. My intention with the 445 alarm uh, was because I was actually going to ride out with a friend, Sophia, and get footage of the leaders of the 150. She said she was going out about four miles out on the course and I could tag along and we could get some good footage of what was going out there with the lead group. And I'm like, fantastic, let's do it. So I set my alarm nice and early so that I could wake up for that. Well, I wake up, my alarm, first thing that I'm going to do is check the dots. So I pull up my phone, check the dots, look to see where everybody I know is at, start scrolling down. I know some people have pulled the plug already at that point uh, that I'd heard about through the night. Um, but I get down to my buddy Ben, who's from Florida, and Ben's at like mile 92, 93. And I'm like, okay, I've seen the writing this guy's done. I, he did a solo 200 miler here earlier this year. I'm like, there's no way he's sitting at mile 92. What's going on? So I go to his Instagram, pull up his Instagram to see him dealing with the mud to then clicking on the next slide and seeing him with a broken derailleur on the next slide, switching it to a single speed on the next side, breaking his rear through axle. Um, and is now walking his bike back on Highway 2. So it's 440. And then the next actually slide after that was, if anybody would like to come get me, that'd be great. Uh, so I contact him, and he's like, dude, that'd be fantastic if you could help me out. Um, so I'm rolling out of the hotel room, 449, um, and I'm, I'm exhausted. I haven't had a coffee. I haven't done anything. I'm literally rolling out of bed. I threw on some, I don't even know if I threw on shoes. I'm, no, I think I just threw on like shoes, no socks. Just yeah. got out as quick as I could because I knew my I was time crunched. Ultimately, I still had at that point two hours and 10 minutes, but he was a 30 minute drive away. Um, and then 30 minutes back. And then 30 minutes back, yes. Um, and so I hop in the car and just take off and navigate my way, get to where he was at, find him. Um, he was in high spirits considering he traveled from Florida to Lincoln, Nebraska to do 300 miles of long voyage and ended less than a third of the way through. Uh, he was in pretty high spirits, though. We started riding back. He, you could tell that because he wasn't on the bike, he wasn't moving. He just he was ready to crash. So, actually, we got back to the hotel. He crashed in the car, fell asleep in the parking lot. I run in, grab a quick coffee, start drinking it, and go upstairs, change all my clothes, and then bring out my bike and realized I brought my car that doesn't have a bike rack on the back because I'd left yeah, that. You were flying solo for the weekend. I was flying solo. So I'd just thrown my car, my bike in the back of the car, put down the seats. Yeah. Fits perfectly fine. All good. And it's secure that way. Yes. Well, Ben's bike was already in there. <laughs> and so we're having to figure out a way to get both of our bikes um, into the back of the car um, with the seats folded down everything. We made it work, kind of sort of stuck them a little bit together handlebars, all that fun stuff. Um, at this point, it is probably about 6.40, maybe 6.45. My event starts at 7. So we roll over um, as quick as we can to get there and um, unpack the, my bike, unpack his bike, um, and I just say, dude, I'll see you later. I tried to eat a quick um, little Stroop waffle. Um, I hadn't had anything to eat. I had had about a third of a cup of coffee to drink that morning and hopped on the bike and uh, started riding 75 miles pretty much five minutes after that. Well, <laughs> I mean, but w- 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 we say this, but I-, I think you would agree with me that I've been to a ton of gravel events and ridden very few of those events I've been to. But there's a lot of fun in helping other people at these events, and that's probably um, why we 
go to as well, many as we do. And here's the thing. I wouldn't have done it differently at all. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't have, even knowing how crazy it made the day and how crazy it made the morning and ultimately how not having breakfast that morning <laughs> really impacted how much energy I had to spend on the bike moments later. Yeah. Um, I still wouldn't change it. Yeah. Um, again, you mentioned kind of at the beginning, Gravel Family. Like, Ben is somebody that I didn't even know at this time last year. He's watched the show in the past. Yes. Um, he reached out to me about this time, maybe a little bit later than this last year when I started sending out handwritten letters to people um, mm-hmm. and just started doing that. He had reached out to me, nice. and I sent him a letter down there in Florida, and he sent one back, and we kind of kept in touch through that and then Instagram. Um, met for the first time in person on Friday up there at mm-hmm. Gravel Worlds. Um, hit it off. He's just a person that's filled with joy and happiness and um, was just excited to be there and be part of the event. And, you know, I told him, I said, the thing is, is I know that if it was the other way around, you'd do the same thing for me because it is the Gravel family. And that was more than anything what I felt this weekend up there. In yeah. And I felt like I am back around people that are family, that, that, that these folks will do anything for me they will support me they will lift me up they will come and get me if i needed to be gotten yeah um in four o'clock in the morning so and you know kind of that was your morning you're just now getting (laughs) you're just now getting on the bike in your story right here you've got 75 miles ahead of you yes correct so i rolled to the i you know i told mindy a friend of mine from colorado who'd come down she was originally going to do the 150 she opted for the 75 just she's taken on a full-time job Uh, she got laid off during covid took on a full-time job and basically has had no time to really train and ride bikes. And so we're like, you know what, let's just party pace, you know, hang out, enjoy our time together and ride the 75 mile. Well, I told her I'd be there, you know, 6.30, 6.40. And I didn't have time to text her through all of this. Again, I was running and going as fast as I could just to make sure I got to the start on time. And so I get there, I roll up, I'm like, crazy morning i'll tell you about it as we ride bikes today let's just get out and have a good that, time that, that is a nice thing about riding 75 miles with someone is you have plenty of time to tell them about your day <laughs> correct and so we get we get out there rolling but the thing is is like you, you, the beginning of events especially big events like that there is no there is no start of the race party pace you still start the race and go and so you know we're, we're riding pretty strong and riding pretty strong for quite some time uh, which was probably the right time to do it too, because we were heading into the north wind. Even though it was just ten mile an hour, it was nice to ride kind of hard and and catch the drafts of other people heading north. Um, and you know we were rolling those hills all the way up to Valparaiso. When we got to Valparaiso, stopped. I got a water from the Boy Scouts. That's one of the things I love about Gravel Worlds is mm-hmm. they've got little aid stations like that that do support groups. So they supported baseball teams. I know in the past mm-hmm. the Boy Scouts are always up around the Valparaiso area, and I always roll in, and I had a dollar ready for them. I knew that they were going to be there hand them a dollar bill, get my water bottle. I'm not there more than 20, 30 seconds, hop back on the bike and go catch Mindy. And so um, got to do that. I needed it too because I was only carrying two water bottles on me that day. Did, did Mindy attack you in the feed zone? Um, Mindy didn't stop. She's just like, I'm <laughs> going. You'll catch up to me. I know you will. Um, and so I did actually have to ride pretty hard for a while. Say, man, she's got faith in you, Neil. Dude, Mindy's a hard ride. I mean, she's five-time finisher, DK. Yeah. Um, she's got her, her goblet, you know, or chalice, whatever. And so she's a tough rider. And yeah. so, yeah, I do. And, I, and I, she rides in Colorado, you know, 6,000 feet yeah, higher. Yeah, up, up in the Denver area. Yeah. And so I go and I, I, I do chase her down. I eventually get back to her um, a lot quicker than I anticipated I would, but uh, caught back up. Um, and we just, you know, our whole thing is, yes, we're going to party pace it. Yeah, we're going to go a little bit slower maybe than we normally would. We're not going to push ourselves to the point of just, hurting 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 mm-hmm. um as we've done at other events because i've ridden mm-hmm. parts of past dks yeah. with her i've ridden parts of land runs with her on well i guess never actually ridden a mid south down there with her but um and and she's always strong out there and we were always riding hard and it was all about just having fun on the bike which is kind of what i needed at that point more than anything else i needed a fun day you know you talked about like valparaiso and some of those small towns which i absolutely love too yeah. Uh, as a photographer in years past, because you're sitting there, you know, especially in some of the earlier days at Gravel Worlds when we were there, here you are sitting at this little small town gas station, you know, and you know what's coming down the road, (laughs) two or three miles, that there's this pack of maybe a hundred people, and and it's just the everyday small town, and every small town in Midwest America has got these people in and out, telling the stories, what they're doing for the day, 
And it's always just fun seeing how the small towns react and then all of the questions you get from the people in the small town and asking all these questions and it's just a great feeling. One question I had for you was, was, yes, you had the small town checkpoints this year, but you also had more of kind of a centralized or gravel world specific checkpoint. What was that experience like? Yeah, so they had a specific checkpoint on private property. We weren't probably on the private property for more than maybe a half a mile in total. Okay. It's a cow pasture you ride through and you got to get to the, the feed zone area. Uh, so that's at about, it was about mile 45 for us that were doing the 75 milers. The 150s came through, and even the uh, 50K riders all came through that point. Um, and so we're kind of rolling to it, and we start seeing people coming from other roads towards us, and we're like, wait, what's going on? And that's when it clicked, oh, yeah, you know, there's other courses, other people riding out here at this time. And so uh, we're hitting up to that checkpoint, and River, the kid that we saw in the introduction yep. that we'll see a little bit more from later, is riding with his dad, climbing this hill. I mean, this little human on a bike is just crushing this hill in front of us, heading into the feed zone. So it's just uplifting to get to see that. And then we hit that point, and honestly, for us, mid-pack, you know, but again, we're hitting that checkpoint at the same time that 150 and 50K riders are also hitting it. Um, they handled it well. I walked right up to a guy uh, to get my, my water bottles filled. He took them for me, filled them super quick, Handed him right back to me. I walked over and put the tailwind that I was using that day in the bottle, shook him up. Um, they had a little picture area that you go over and snag a, a, yeah. a photo. Um, so me and Mindy headed over there. They had a row of porta potties for folks that needed those. Uh, hot dogs, snacks. I mean, everything you pretty much you know would want there. They had it all laid out. You could go grab what you need. And honestly, we were. I, I looked at it afterwards. Our, our total stop time was like less than five minutes. Uh, but yet it was so so efficient for I mean and I know five minutes is super long maybe for people that are racing front of the pack but for us that were just party pace and having a good time mm -hmm. like it was efficient we could have honestly been a lot quicker um, and and I thought they did a great job with it yeah I, I like hearing that about the checkpoints because it's it's easy to hear from some loud voices maybe yeah that oh it was a little hectic and let me tell you this I have stood at so many checkpoints at major events oh, yeah. that there is no amount of water spigots, volume of water, hands to be held out to handle when that first group hits a checkpoint that is racing for the day. The, the, the only way it's going to happen is if you have your own specific teams there that are already providing Correct. everything there for but you. But what I saw that day was but, perfect out of the Gravel World team. I think it's cool that everybody looped back. So you had a chance to interact maybe and yeah. see. You know, you would have never seen like River out there on the 50K, no. or you probably would have never seen the 150-mile riders either that day. No, I mean, the, the way that, of course, it, 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 you had to be careful, though. You couldn't uh, follow the person in front of you. Yeah. Uh, which was kind of dangerous for us because um, Mindy struggled downloading the route, and I completely forgot to download the route. And so um, at that point, I actually pulled out the phone, pulled up Ride with GPS really quick, and made sure we were going the right yeah. direction uh, because we were combined at that point heading out with people that were doing other routes than what we were doing, and I wanted to make sure, hey, yeah. we're taking the right turns, we're not following 150 people, and all of a sudden we're adding on who knows how many miles to our day. Um, but other, other than that, honestly, for the volume of people that were flowing into that checkpoint at that time, um, I thought everything was, was smooth. Yeah. Really. You know, so moving out of the checkpoint halfway through the day, take me through the end of your day and the finish line. So end of the day, I'll be honest, I was starting to get, you know, I just, I was wore out again. Yeah. It, it, it's part just. I didn't have a breakfast, didn't have, you know, that morning kind of pour yeah, and, of calories. And when was the last time you rode 75 miles? Not not to knock you, but, I mean, oh, we, we haven't had long rides much this year. I, honestly, probably in April when I did open range was the yeah. last I did. That was loaded down. I don't know if I've done much. So I've done a couple 60, so 75 but 75 miles is a long, long yeah, ride this I, year. I just haven't had the time to ride that distance. Uh, my miles are way down this year. Uh, you know, so we roll out. Honestly, spirits are good. We're, we're happy. We're having a good time. The thing, about, again, we, me and Mindy party paced it, and we had a fun day on the bike. We're singing songs. We're telling jokes. There was a time in our Instagram story we were singing Country Roads, and we were, you know, vertical filming it for stories and all like that. And uh, definitely, because of doing that, got way too close to each other and interlocked our handlebars for a moment. We thought no. we were going down. Yeah. <laughs> this was probably about 55 miles or so in that day. And, but, we locked and then were able to unlock really quick, but we both thought we were going down. 
we laughed about it and we said from now on we're doing uh we're no, no longer doing duets if one of us is going to sing on instagram it's going to be a solo uh <laughs> so we uh again we were having fun a lot of riders that were riding around us throughout the day kind of noticed that fun picked up on it so some would occasionally join in would join us in song or join us in some fun um, and it, we were just trying to have a good time and not only uplift ourselves, but other riders around us. And, um, this, this reminds me a lot of a day that you and I might've jumped in a pool with some people. If you would have seen a pool that afternoon, hundred percent, hundred percent would have been in hundred percent. If there was somebody on the side of the road that was cheering us on yeah. and, and they had a pool there, 100% I would have jumped in fair enough because it was that kind of ride we were having again we were out to have fun mm -hmm. we were not racing I think if we raced we probably could have finished a whole lot earlier if we wanted to um, we could have pushed harder um, there were times that I was hitting a wall I tend to hit a wall on most rides somewhere between a 60 to 70 mile mark and and I was definitely hitting a wall about 65 to 70 miles um, just had to fight through it yeah. got through it it was all good um but, you know, we, we hung next to each other. We had fun. Um, as we're rolling in, the last little section was kind of a section that looked like they almost cut in uh, so that we could get back into the Fallbrook neighborhood uh, without taking some of the pavement through. And so um, it was a cool little dirt section um, before you you drop off the curb, too. There's no mm -hmm. flat exit oh. or anything. You drop off the curb. So you got that like little 6-inch or 4-inch drop off the curb um, down on the pavement. And then it was smooth sailing in. We hit the finish line. Um, and I was glad to be done, uh, but was also sad that it was over because, again, we were having fun, which is part of what has been missing at times for bikes for me. You know, sometimes I've been going out in events past. Again, I haven't really done a, a, a race event, really, yeah. since 2019. And 2019 race events were all about the race. Correct. All about fast, fast, hard, go as hard as you can, keep moving. Um, and then in 2020, I never actually did a real race. And so um, it was nice to kind of just have some fun as a way to get kind of back. It's in. good to hear. Yeah. You know, I think that's, I, I think it's a uh, inspirational and good to hear about having fun. I mean, and looking at your numbers, I'm not going to say them. You guys finished in the middle. No, like, yeah. We, 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 you we, guys party paced it. You had a great day and it wasn't like they were waiting to hold, keep the finish line open for you guys. Correct. Yeah. No, I mean, for the 75, we finished, we finished mid pack, which is great. I'm happy finishing mid pack. That's, that's especially, but yeah, we were party pacing it. Again, could a lot of things have been different? Could we have gone a whole lot faster? Could we have finished, you know, instead of mid-pack, maybe top third or something? Possibly. But why? But why? Exactly. For the amount of fun that we had, and, and both of us said it afterwards, that was the most fun we've had. Does the bike podium go to time. 75 places? or No, um, it doesn't go so that deep. So you guys so. got a great day out of it. Enjoyed a day on a bike. Absolutely. And, and embraced what we've been talking a lot about with Gravel Worlds, and Jason talked about it in his interview. The Gravel family. Family, man. Absolutely. And, and speaking was... of Gravel family, you mentioned him here. We opened the show with him. Was River from up in Nebraska, nine years old. Let's hear from River real quick on finishing the 50K. It was very... It was adventurous. Up and down and up and down. And it really was like you were a pirate going up and down the waves. What was your favorite part about the whole ride? Um, I think it was all kind of the same. It was all kind of the same, but I like I liked it all. I can't really say I don't, I don't I don't know. Neil, is it not great to see kids out there on bikes, especially at events like this? Dude, it was awesome. Again, when we saw River climbing the hill right before the checkpoint, we didn't know who River was at that point. We didn't know that River was the youngest person to ever complete a Gravel Worlds event. So at nine years old, finishing the 50K, youngest to ever go out and do any of their events. I mean, that was just awesome. Uh, but the kid was just cool. His dad was so supportive. Uh, talking to his dad afterwards, he said that that it almost, though, didn't go through the whole day. Um, kid, nine years old. Yeah. Okay. Uh, about 10 miles into the day. Um, they had 15 miles to the checkpoint, 10 miles into the day. Don't know exactly what happened, but dad told me he cut his thumb. He had a little cut right below his, his nail, um, on his thumb there between the knuckle and the, the fingernail. Um, and you know, nine years old, it was hurting. 
and he asked his dad, um, you know, which is closer, going back to the start or getting to the checkpoint so that I can get a Band-Aid for this. Uh, and it's just like, you've got to remember, this kid is, he's that age. He's at that age where yeah. Band-Aid's what fixes it. And yet he's going out there and crushing 50K, 31 plus miles yeah. of hilly, hilly gravel roads. I mean, it's it's inspirational. And what you don't see when we're, when we're talking to him um, in, in that video is just off to the left uh, is Lauren DiCrescenzo and her team, all the folks that are there uh, as part of Cinch that you know, are, are supporting her, that are cheering her on, that are there getting her food you know, at the end as she's sitting there and recovering from it all. And, and they're all just sitting there, like, hyping this kid up, telling him about how awesome he is and cheering him on. And it's just like, that kid's, he's the future, man. Yeah. And it was so, so good to get to see uh, River and his dad out there doing that. Yeah, and I think a huge shout-out to River's dad for being out there with him and taking oh, yeah. it. I mean, there, we, we've all rode with new people, maybe not nine years old type deal, getting them started. I mean, when you rode with the high school kids yeah. back in the day there, Riding with new people is not the easiest thing to do either. No, um, not at all. But, you know, his dad clearly had him ready. You yeah. don't just hop on a bike and do yeah. 31 miles of hilly up and down, yeah. up and down, uh, gravel up in Nebraska. And so his dad got him ready, and it was just awesome. And, and again, you could, you could see the pride that his father had when that was, you know, done, that here's his son um, at nine years old that just, crushed and had a great day yeah that, that's so great to hear i mean this is what gravel family is about this these are the stories we like to tell on gravel guru i mean it's one thing to go out there when you've trained and trained and trained and maybe a sponsor's paying for you to be there or helping get you there type deal or you're an ambassadorship but hearing about kids and families being out there on bikes I, that, that just warms the heart absolutely again it, it was it was one of the highlights of the weekend mm -hmm. no doubt um and to know that he's he's wanting to go and do it again and keep riding um, do better. That's just mm -hmm. awesome because uh, I have no doubt that River will go out next year and only do better. Um, and hopefully he has a love for bikes that takes yeah. him further and further in life. Hopefully we see him more places here in the future. Neil, parting thoughts on the weekend at Gravel Worlds? Uh, man, it was awesome. It was just good to be back with the family. Um, yeah. It was good to be back with the Gravel family. Absolutely had a blast um, getting to be up there. I, I hope that sooner rather than later we get to have more moments like that um again because it it absolutely 100 percent was a big event in everything that was going around it but 100 percent also felt like it was a grassroots small group of close folks that just had a good time together and so they, they did a good job of executing i really thought so that's great to hear. Uh, I look forward to next year being back. We might have to have a first birthday party up there next year, but I'm going to yeah. be at Gravel Worlds next year. Being away for two years is a lot, but I was where I needed to be that week. Um, really look forward to it. Can't thank the crew up at Gravel Worlds enough. We've got Corey, Craig, Jen, Jason, and Sophia. You guys are doing awesome up there putting this event on. Thanks, everybody, at Schilling Bridge and Fallbrook. Absolutely love that area. It's like being in a pseudo downtown. Probably downtown Lincoln is too much or too hard to get and it's a long ways into town from the gravel but out there at fallbrook is a great place for it great food so really look forward to being there next year you guys are doing great work and i'd like to also give a huge shout out to neil and isaac for being up there to fly the gravel guru flag for lack of other terms um they're the ones that are bringing this coverage to you um can't wait to see people out on the gravel and uh, just keep pedaling on absolutely guys keep riding and we look forward to hearing back from you guys and seeing what you're doing Stay tuned for more Gravel Guru this summer.